Hey guys, welcome back once again to the third episode of uh, Gross Pathology series. We already know the routine, right? If you're first time here, the routine is we show a specimen, describe an organ first, then describe what is abnormal in the organ, that's a pathology, and then come to a presumptive diagnosis, right? If you missed it, go to the first video where I've discussed clearly like what exactly to do before uh, sitting or answering in a pathology viewer because that will be definitely more helpful. If you're first time here, click the subscribe button. Let's learn more about pathology, medicine, and competitive exam as a whole, fine? Let's start. First here thing here, uh, this is the organ here. I'm sure you must have seen this organ or the diagnosis, right? So first question is, what is the organ and how do I define what is the organ here, right? Okay, so here what I can say is, it's a kind of an round to an oval shaped organ because I'm not able to yet say what organ it is. Attached to a long structure, right? So I probably assume that this could be the overlying epididymis and the spermatic cord arranged to it. Turn the specimen, look at the connection because epididymis will generally be like a structure like this, right? It'll be above the testis, right? And I presume that this entire thing is a testicular parenchyma, right? So it's a cut open specimen of a testis. I can identify it's a testis by the epididymis overlying, turn it and show them and also the elongated spermatic cord attached to the structure, right? That's how I can say it's a testis. Now let's come to the pathology. So what is the pathology here? In the cut section of Celsius, what I see is I see a normal testicular parenchyma here. This is the only place where it's normal. I am I'm, I'm sure you're able to appreciate the color difference. It's like kind of a brownish color, right? This is the only normal testicular parenchyma. So I can say this cut surface, the entire testicular parenchyma is compressed to one side and the entire testicular parenchyma is replaced by a solid homogeneous lesion, most likely a tumor, right? This is definitely solid, this is definitely homogeneous and look at this, this may be a testicular parenchyma, it's entirely replaced, right? There's no cystic areas, there's no areas of necrosis, there's no area of hemorrhage. This is again reiterating the point, it is solid and homogeneous. Negative finding is also very important for me, right? So solid homogeneous fleshy architecture in the cut surface of testis most likely is a testicular tumor and the most likely diagnosis here for me is seminoma. Because seminoma is the one which has this solid appearance. If you want to add, if they ask something about it, most likely diagnosis for me is seminoma. Like I said, uh, the finding of an uh, brain-like consistency or a potato-like consistency is more appreciable on a gross, freshly cut gross. This is a stored specimen, so I cannot be able to say that neither I can palpate the uh, structure here, right? It's only visible. So just solid, homogeneous, no areas of hemorrhage, necrosis, anything. So and the normal testicular parenchyma is compressed, so we most likely diagnosis seminoma, that's all. You might be asked a few questions. Seminoma is definitely one of the tumor. The equivalent part in women is called as a dysgerminoma. It is a primary malignant germ cell tumor. The most common malignant germ cell tumor is seminoma. Microscopy lab, nested architecture with intervening septa having classical lymphocytes, right? Seminoma can, is totally different from spermatocytic seminoma, which happens in elderly 50, 60 year old. Seminoma happens in 20, 40 years old. Right? That's, that, that's a general uh, group of seminoma. And seminoma is extremely radiosensitive. These are a few points which you can use for viva, right? Let's go to the next one, fine? Right? Next image here. Okay. Yes. Fine, perfect. You have to see the organ? Now let's first, the same route. Describe the organ, tell the abnormality, and maybe the most probable diagnosis, fine? Right? So this organ, I feel that it's a cut open or a bivalve specimen of a uterus or you can say hysterectomy. So how do we say it's uterus or a hysterectomy? If you look at the lower end of the organ, you can see the cervical canal here. And if you slowly go up, this actually this is a cavity. That's your endometrial cavity, right? So this overlying outer part is the cervix. And here I have the endometrial cavity most likely. And then you have the myometrium surrounding that as well, fine? You can see the cavity here more than that because of the bival its nature is not going directly to it, right? So now I am making sure it's a uterus. So again, there are multiple other pointers for uterus. Turn the specimen. You might see in the back side here, the fallopian tubes. You can say that the cut end of the fallopian tubes are seen or maybe bilaterally ovary can also be present so that you can say it's definitely a case of a specimen of a uterus or a hysterectomy with a bilateral oophorectomy and salpingeo oophorectomy if they are available. Otherwise, a specimen of hysterectomy is more than enough, right? Now, in this specimen, in the superior aspect of the specimen that is above the endometrial cavity, I have a very solid, again, size, maybe 5 into 6 centimeter or something. If you can measure that using a finger rule, you can definitely measure that, right? Again, in the myometrial area, I'm having a very solid 4 into 5 or 5 into 5 centimeter, whatever the size is, a homogeneous structure, which actually looked like world appearance. That word is very, very important because you know the diagnosis here. 
I am just leading the person to the diagnosis, right? A world appearance, a solid thing in the myometrium of a uterus, the answer is simply leomyoma, right? Or a fibroid uterus, okay? Leomyoma fibroid uterus, that's a classical diagnosis here. Fine, let's discuss about few important uh, points which can come in the viva. Leomyoma is the commonest benign tumor in the uterus. Leomyoma can be in the muscle, intramural, can be submucosal, can be subserosal, uh, sub right? Anywhere I can have leomyoma. I can have wandering leomyoma which can happen throughout the body. And leomyoma is a smooth muscle tumor, not just in uterus. Anywhere where smooth muscle, leomyoma can happen, right? Microscopy, classical world appearance, immunohistochemistry, SMA is positive, smooth muscle antigen. Coming from smooth muscle, smooth muscle antigen is definitely positive, right? That's a classical description of leomyoma and few points about it, right? Let's go to the next guy. Next guy is again a simple one. Okay, perfect. So it's a classical tenectomy specimen. For this, you don't need to tell. See, like I said in the previous thing, if you see the surgery, it's more appreciable from the point of view than saying it's a specimen of penis. No one is going to cut a penis normally. No one is going to cut a uterus normally unless there's a problem, right? So you can say it's a classical specimen of penile or a tenectomy specimen. How I am identifying its penis is you can see the glands penis, you can see the overlying skin, and also in the cut surface, you can actually appreciate the corporas. I'm sure you remember your anatomy, corpora spongiosa, corpora cavernosa, that's there in the gut surface. So based on the structure, based on the uh, structures which I have described, I'm thinking it's a penis and it's a classical case of a penectomy specimen, right? So now let's come to the pathology. So here, close to the glands or the prepusal area of the penis, on the outer surface, I feel there's an ulcerated lesion and it's a proliferative lesion. Why I'm saying it's proliferative? Because it's irregular, right? So it's an ulceroproliferative lesion at the junction of the glands and the junction of the skin, that's the prepusal skin, I have an ulceroproliferative lesion. On the cut surface, yes, I can feel that ulceroproliferative lesion is a bit irregular going and invading into the gland penis, right? So this ulceroproliferative lesion on cut surface is white in color, has a little bit area for necrosis. Why I'm insisting necrosis though you're not able to appreciate here this, you know it's a classical case of squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma for an undergraduate, I expect few findings. Ulceroproliferative lesion, don't mention here cauliflower leg growth because it's not like a cauliflower. If it's very proliferative, use the term cauliflower leg growth. Tan, gray, sorry, white color appearance or pearly white in appearance and will undoubtedly have necrosis. These are findings which I expect from my undergraduate, so tell them. It will have necrosis by default, right? Okay, so now I know the organ. It's a classical case of venectomy. We know the pathogenesis and most likely diagnosis is squamous cell carcinoma of penis. I can just say carcinoma of penis also. I would require microscopy to say what type of carcinoma it is, but you can also say the most likely carcinoma is squamous cell carcinoma of penis, right? So a few words about squamous cell carcinoma of penis. It's most likely uh, happens in elderly person. Multiple sexual partner is definitely one of the risk factors. Circumcision can is kind of actually confers immunity to a, a squamous cell carcinoma if it's done very, very, very early in life, right? Because circumcision uh, kind of reduces all the carcinogenic material accumulating. That is definitely protective for sure, right? Microscopy of any squamous cell carcinoma, keratin pearl, you know that finding, and the four features of dysplasia, marker undoubtedly is your P63 and P40. And I would also want to do P16. P16 is a new marker by WHO because P16, if it's positive, I can say it is HPV related because quite a few squamous cell carcinoma is HPV related like your cervical carcinoma, right? Perfect. Let's go to the next guy. Okay, this is la uh, uh, this is one more easy specimen. Once, once you see this, no, you will know the diagnosis. But again, don't jump into the diagnosis. The first and the foremost thing is organ for me. So here, I'm not able to appreciate the organ. The only thing I can see is this is a cut surface of a cystic structure or a cystic lesion. I don't know what it is, right? Let's turn it back. You will definitely see a specimen of, I hope this is tube hanging outside, right? So when you, once you turn outside, you will see a tiny elongated structure. Presuming it's a tube or a fallopian tube along with the tubo ovarian and every ligament there, I am assuming that this is a removed specimen of an uh, ovary or an oophorectomy specimen, right? Perfect. Okay, now let's come and describe the pathogenesis. Like I said, it's a cut open structure of a cystic lesion, right? It's cystic lesion. I can add few more things. This is a tiny cyst, this is a tiny cyst, this is a big cyst, right? Maybe kind of looking like a multi loculated with a huge cyst measuring so and so centimeter. In the cystic area, I am not able to see the cyst contents in this specimen because it's been removed. But there's one beautiful solid area in the cystic structure and also few overlying hair-like structure. This solid area looks, looks very white and probably these are calcific deposits or maybe cartilaginous or bony structures. I'm not sure about it, right? And this hair-like fusion is also seen there. So since I'm having a cystic structure in the ovary, 
with cartilage area with epidermal derivatives of hair my most likely diagnosis here is an teratoma a mature cystic teratoma very simple or a dermoid cyst whatever you want to say a mature cystic teratoma is a more of a uh, scientific answer than a dermoid cyst right mature cystic teratoma that's all we know the diagnosis right a pathology and we know the diagnosis few words for mcqs cystic teratomas can happen in ovary testis mediastinum and also in the midline in the brain in the brain we call them as germinoma teratoma is more common in ovary compared to testis its testis is a bit rare and teratoma is mostly cystic teratomas can be multiple ways i can have an uh, like an uh, mature cystic teratoma has all the three germ layers i have something called a monodermal or a specialized teratoma when you have only thyroid tissue i call them as tumor ovary and actually the solid area in teratoma this is a very important viva point the solid area in teratoma we call it rokitansky protuberance rokitansky protuberance is solid area in teratoma where i can most likely see all the three germ layers right i have something called an immature teratoma when you have more than 5% of immature elements what do i call as immature elements something ending with blast or a small round blue cell then i call it the immature teratoma and i have very rarely teratocarcinoma as well teratoma is undoubtedly a benign condition happening in the same reproductive age group perfect that's more than enough right let's go to the last image of today's discussion right a beautiful specimen okay a beautiful specimen see here this i am not able to see the structure you can clearly see uh, sometimes you will not be able to see the structure not able to appreciate the structure right so turn the specimen i have some i am not able to see uh, tell exactly what organ it is but let me start by describing the specimen here so this specimen is a grayish brown specimen or a brown specimen with multiple tiny 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 cystic spaces i am not sure what they are superficially looking all these tiny cystic spaces together looks like grape this word is important it looks like grape like vesicles or grape like structures since i am not sure about the organ i am presuming that grape like vesicle is a classical finding of an hydatiform mole i would need more history to ascertain the organ or the surgery which is done to ascertain the organ why i won't see organist the treatment for hydatiform mole is suction evacuation you remove the mole alone you don't remove the uterus that's why you don't see any organ it's just the products of conception right i won't see any organ right so most likely my diagnosis hydatiform molar pregnancy okay this can definitely come in an exam fine okay sorry it's a hydatiform molar pregnancy so few words about hydatiform mole molar pregnancy has partial mole complete mole complete mole has uh, you know the pathogenesis of the sperm and the ova i'll leave it to you in the comment box the question tell me which of the molar pregnancy will have 69 chromosomes and tell me which of the molar pregnancy will have 46 chromosomes right i'll def one is partial one is complete you tell me which it is right hydatiform mole in microscopy will have huge dilated villi these grape like clusters are nothing but the dilated villi and partial mole will have fetal parts when you have fetal parts and a molar a mole like condition i call it partial mole only molar tissue villi and no fetal parts i call it a complete mole both of them will present with uh, the uterine size will be more than the period of gestation and you might have a withdrawal a bleeding during pregnancy any bleeding antipartum hemorrhage i think of an hydatiform mole especially early in the onset right and hydatiform mole or molar pregnancy the marker in the blood is beta hcg it will be elevated even after treatment i have to follow up with beta hcg because molar pregnancy is a very common risk factor for choriocarcinoma these are the few points which can come in answer right like i said i asked a question please put in the comment box what's the answer see you soon in the next video till then bye bye from dr anjan bye bye